Hey guys, in today's video we are going to be covering robots. So recently I did do a video covering weapons, you know, what weapons I would purchase or upgrade if I had to start the game from scratch as of today. If you want, you can check out that video. I'll put a link to that in the video description. Uh, this is going to be the robots portion of it now. And I'm going to go through, you know, all the robots in workshop as well as the store because I don't believe everything is listed here. And uh, just also a note on that as well because some have been asking me all new content will appear in workshop uh, two months after its release and this was published uh, on their site uh, recently it used to be one month then they extended it to uh, two months so if you're wondering you know why you don't see like that halo or the blitz uh, in workshop that is the reason why so eventually it will come to a uh, workshop anyways taking a look at the carnage would i get the carnage at this point in the game and the answer to that question is no uh, the carnage is just way too slow um, i know it has an energy shield but the problem is it doesn't have that much health and a lot of players in the higher levels of play tend to run energy weapons uh, which is a big problem for this bot so uh, if you are running it in the lower leagues and it's working for you don't upgrade it too much uh, at least that way you save you know on all your silver and your gold and your time and rather invest in another bot uh, maybe a bulwark or something but uh, yeah i definitely would not get the carnage next up we have the fujin so the fujin is a very interesting one because it has three mediums it can actually output quite a lot of damage and it might work in the lower levels of play but in champion league or at least in the higher levels of play uh, you are going to find this bot dies very quickly because it can't really move around quickly like a dash bot um, i know it actually has a very strong energy shield uh, but the problem is just like with the carnage a lot of players tend to run energy weapons uh, which is a counter to the spot so in my opinion if you are thinking about getting like a hechi uh, because that has an energy shield too or a balkazari um, i would maybe use the fujing as a base uh, just so that you have something to put your weapons on then when you have those weapons leveled up and uh, you have enough components for a hechi uh, i would move over to like the hechi or the balkazari instead uh, so would i get the fujing at this point in the game um, you know for higher level play uh, the answer to that question is no um, moving on here to the raijing so the raijing you know i've you know obviously mentioned my opinion on this in previous videos i would not run the raijing because it has a lot of health uh, but the big problem with this bot is that it can't move around quickly um, obviously it's a lot quicker now than it was when it was first released but it's still not helping this bot um, the problem in higher level play is that a lot of players tend to also run splash damage like Orkins and Tolumbus, uh, which is a counter to this bot. So while it might do well on maybe larger maps, uh, you know, it's very map dependent and we're talking about very specific uh, situations here where this bot can do well. Uh, but in my honest opinion, if you plan on uh, obviously playing in the higher levels of play, I would not invest in the Raijing. It might work in the lower levels, but again, don't spend too much of your resources upgrading it because uh, when you get to like Champion League, you are going to find that uh, you will need a different bot. Uh, again, you know, if I had to choose something other than the Raijing, maybe a Bulwark, I think might be a little bit better if you want something tankier or maybe a Falcon. But uh, yeah, that's my opinion on the Raijing. And uh, the Raven is the other one so the raven can be a bit of a tricky bot um you know i've seen some players use it in champion league uh, but in all honesty it just goes down really really quickly it's kind of like the hover uh, you know when you use a double jump you're out in the open it's not like you have stealth um, but you do move a lot quicker so that can be a bit of a good thing um, this one i will you know kind of classify it as maybe but I think in the highest level of play you are not going to see the raven and for me personally i would not invest in uh, resources for this bot again this is just my opinion um, it's just something that you know through experience and all these uh, top clans you know when i play against them there's no ways that this bot would be able to survive that kind of uh, level of play um, so for me personally i would not uh, invest in the raven and uh, moving on uh, down here we have the rhino so the rhino used to be very strong before and i actually see quite a few rhinos you know still being used and with uh, the halo or some of the shotgun builds it could actually work but you know if we're talking about the highest level of play in this game uh, for me personally i would not invest in a rhino i think instead what i would do is maybe invest in something like a balkazari if you want that physical shield uh, but again this is just my opinion uh, on this it might work really well in the lower levels of play but i would not invest heavily into this bot and rather put it towards uh, something like a balkazari instead 
Next up we have the Hechi. So although the Hechi and the Balkazari did get a slight nerf, it doesn't mean the Hechi is a bad bot. Um, you know, I see a lot of players in Champion League running the Hechi with Orkins, uh, sometimes even Scourge, and they're doing really well with it. Uh, you have to keep in mind that, you know, the Spectre, for example, uh, went from a 5 second stealth to 2 seconds, which makes a Hechi a very good counter to the Spectre Orkin build. So, uh, very deadly, and I think if you are upgrading, you know, weapons on the Fujing, instead of upgrading the Fujing, rather move to the Hechi and upgrade that instead. I don't know if I would do MK2 though for this bot because uh, as you know the way that the game works everything tends to evolve and it changes very quickly. Uh, the Hechi I don't think I would actually get to MK2. I don't have an MK2 myself. Uh, I could run it with just regular level 12 and it'll do just fine for me but uh, would I invest in this bot or would I even get it for that matter? The answer is yes. Next up we have the Kumiho. So the Kumiho did not receive any kind of nerf with the last update. Uh, which is a great thing. The only thing is I'm seeing a lot of high level players running uh, you know striders, pursuers and hellburners which means uh, that's kind of where the game is sort of headed um, but I think uh, if you are a new player and you are thinking of getting something that is quick that can get beacons for your team uh, the Kumiho is a great start um, but I don't know if I would actually get this to MK2. I think for me personally I just get it to level 12 and then kind of stop there and then maybe move towards something like um, you know a pursuer or a hellburner um, again, that's just my opinion, but definitely worth getting and worth investing in. Next up on the list, we have the Inquisitor. So I originally had two of these in my main lineup, uh, just regular level 12 uh, running Ember Tyrans, and then they came out with the Spectre, so I had to kind of transition to that. Uh, now with the recent rebalancing of the game, I have brought both of my Inquisitors back into my lineups and uh, you know I have uh, one with Embertrons and one with Redeemertrons and they work really really well. Uh, one thing that players must realize is that this bot has 5 seconds stealth versus the Spectre which only has 2 seconds so it's a great counter to the Spectre. Uh, definitely a bot I would get and level up. Uh, you don't even need to get this to MK2 so that's a great thing because it has a lot of health. So that is the Inquisitor. Next on the list we have the Mercury. So I'm starting to see more and more players in Champion League run this bot. Uh, what is making it very deadly are the lockdown weapons like Halo and Shredder. If you run that with Exodus or Ember, it can create a very deadly combo. Um, you got to keep in mind too that you have the Helldive ability which also does damage. And something to also point out because a couple of you have asked me on this. Uh, the more you have this bot leveled up, the more damage you do with the Helldive. So uh, this is a bot that I would want to get to MK2. And uh, quite honestly, I am thinking about upgrading uh, one of these. I just haven't gotten around to that because I'm working on a bulwark right now. But, you know, I prefer the gameplay of the Mercury over the Inquisitor. Definitely a lot more fun, uh, but one that I would invest in. Next up, we have the infamous Spectre. So I know a lot of players are saying that the Spectre is dead, but you have to keep in mind that it has jump, it has stealth, and you can equip it with four medium weapons. Uh, I have been running two of these in my main lineup um, with Talumbus and Storm. Sometimes I mix it up with Orkins as well. And you know, those builds have been doing really well for me. One thing that I do caution players though is to build up a lineup with five of these. I would not do that at all. I think it's a waste of time and resources taking that route. Uh, I know, you know, players out there want to do a lot of damage, but if you are caught out in the open on a larger map, uh, it doesn't end well. So for me personally, I think the most I would put in a lineup is maybe two. Uh, that would be my advice uh, for anyone who is uh, deciding to get the Spectre. And uh, you know, for me personally, I would upgrade to MK2 only because it doesn't have a lot of health. So yep, it's worth investing in, just don't uh, overdo it and get five. Following the Spectre, we have the Strider. So I did talk about the Strider briefly when I was talking about the Kumiho uh, in terms of you know how I'm starting to see more Champion League players run the Strider, the Hellburner and the Pursuer. Those three in particular are great at getting beacons. Um, I think if I had a choice between this and the Kumiho, I'd probably go Strider only because of the five dashes. But uh, just like the Kumiho, I don't think I would get this all the way up to MK2. Um, you're not getting more dashes, you're not doing more damage, uh, you're using it strictly to get beacons. So um, I think it's a great bot uh, for that. So I definitely get it and invest in it if my main purpose you know of the bot is to get beacons okay and we have the bulwark next so with the bulwark i did talk about it briefly when i was talking about the carnage uh, i mentioned that 
you know, I'd rather get the Bulwark over the Carnage and one reason why is because of the Aegis Shield. So there are only two bots currently in the game with the Shield, uh, the Blitz and the Bulwark and the Aegis Shield is the only shield in the game that can pretty much block everything. Uh, just keep in mind though that we are testing corrosion weapons on the test server and the Bulwark was taking damage from that weapon. Uh, doesn't mean that this bot is bad uh, because I'm seeing a lot of players in Champion League running uh, this bot with Dragoons and it is a pain to deal with on a larger map. And for me personally, I am building one right now. I'm leveling it up. So I'm definitely going to put that in my lineup. Whether I make it MK2, I'm not sure yet. I might kind of wait and see where we go with the corrosion weapons, what that's going to do uh, to the Bulwark. And I'll decide you know, from then on whether I should actually make it MK2, but definitely a bot worth getting. Following the Bulwark, we have the Hover. So you guys know my opinion on the Hover. It is not a bot that I recommend getting and leveling up. Um, it might work in lower level play, but when you get to Champion League, the problem is a lot of players are running energy weapons. Everything from, you know, Flux, Dragoons, uh, Scourge, Spark, Shock Trains, uh, Turans, all of those weapons do a lot of damage in a very short amount of time. And uh, you gotta think, you know, when you're in a hob and you're gliding in the air, there's no cover. So you're out in the open and you can't escape. And that is enough time to be, you know, obviously shot down uh, by the weapons that I have mentioned. So I would not get the hover at all. Again, just my opinion uh, if you want to save resources and your time as well. The next robot we are going to be taking a look at is the Hellburner. So many of you know that this is one of my favorite robots in the game right now. I'm a great beacon runner and in my opinion it's actually better than the Strider because on um, a larger map it tends to cover ground a lot quicker uh, if you compare it to the Strider. Um, it can do a lot of damage. Uh, anyone who is within 75 meter radius of it when it detonates uh, will take on damage. And the thing with the Hellburner, uh, the more upgraded it is, uh, the more damage it does. So you want to level this up and uh, definitely a robot that I would get, I think, in the current meta. Okay, so moving on, we have the Pursuer. So after changes were made to uh, the Spectre, I started seeing a lot of Pursuers out there uh, because of the 10 second stealth. So uh, I think this bot is definitely one worth getting and are worth upgrading in terms of you know what builds I would run on here you know the halo uh, the gust or a combination of that I'm seeing a lot of that out there and uh, one that I think is definitely worth getting and upgrading at this point in the game next on our list we have the Wayland so the Wayland is in a very strange spot in the game right now uh, the reason why I say that is because uh, when we had random game modes and we couldn't choose the game mode we wanted uh, the Wayland would actually do really well on TDM but the problem is, if you like Beacon Rush now, you're not going to be selecting TDM. Uh, so you don't really need the Wayland. However, I'm keeping an eye on this bot because uh, with the Corrosion weapons, there are only two bots in the game that can heal themselves, and that is the uh, Mender and the Wayland. The thing is, the best Corrosion weapon I have tested so far is the Viper, and that's a heavy weapon uh, which can be mounted onto the Wayland. It can't be mounted onto the Mender. So definitely a bot worth uh, keeping an eye on, but I don't think it's worth... Uh, getting and investing in uh, you know currently so definitely keep an eye on it uh, you know based on you know what's happening with those corrosion weapons okay so moving on down the list here we have the butch uh, so at this point in the game I don't think I would invest in the butch um, I think for me personally if you're gonna go for like the two weapon uh, heavy weapon slots uh, definitely go for the bulwark or uh, the fury so I think those two I would stick towards uh, in terms of what it offers in the game Moving down the list, we have the Lancelot. So I think for me, personally, I would not invest in the Lancelot. Um, if I have access to Workshop, uh, it means I have access to the Inquisitor, which to me is actually a better bot uh, than the Lancelot. You have Jump and you have Stealth, and I think it works better in you know higher levels of play. Uh, doesn't mean that the Lancelot can't do a lot of damage. It definitely can. But I think uh, for a player who has it, uh, keep it just don't level it up to mk2 or something instead rather move those weapons over to an inquisitor instead uh, so that's what i would do uh, you know in the case of the lancelot and uh, let's go down the list here we have the mender so the mender as i said is one of the only uh, robots in the game other than the wayland that can heal itself and its teammates uh, if you're looking at the corrosion weapons uh, this might be a robot worth considering uh, just to prepare yourself uh, for those corrosion weapons uh, so definitely a robot I would get and uh, level up um, you know in terms of you know what's out there and it is a really strong robot right now 
I run it in my lineup and I'm very happy with it. I'm running it with uh, Corona and the Halo weapons. Works great with the uh, Gust and Storm as well. Okay, so next on our list we have the Fury. So the Fury is actually a great bot. Uh, definitely worth getting and leveling up. Uh, you don't even have to actually get it to MK2 level 12. I run two of these at MK1 level 12 and it works amazing uh, with Dragoons and with Flux. So if you have those weapons, definitely uh, consider the Fury. If you want something stronger, then maybe go for uh, the Bulwark. But even something like Tempest or Zeus works well on the Fury. Okay, so as we approach towards the end of the workshop list here, we have the Falcon. The Falcon is a robot that I would get and level up. I'm starting to see more players actually use this in Champion League. And uh, that is because of the whole 66% damage reduction. Uh, on top of that, uh, this robot actually got quite a bit of a buff with the last update. Um, it now has uh, three heavy weapons and also I think they increased the speed of it. So definitely a robot that I would get and level up uh, in terms of uh, if you want to use it in Champion League. Um, I guess with the rest of the robots, because I'm looking at the Dock, uh, the Galahad, the, um, the Regatka, the Stalker, and the Gepard. So while these robots might work in the lower levels of play, um, you're not going to find them in Champion League. And uh, that is because they're just not that effective. So I think if you are getting uh, these robots and you are leveling it up, don't level it up too much because eventually you will want to transition into much stronger robots uh, so that you can at least compete in Champion League. So I think that pretty much wraps up, uh, you know, the workshop list that we have here. I'm now going to go to uh, the store to see what we have here in the store. So I'm going to go through this. Uh, Destria, Kozak, I would not level those up. And uh, the Vityas, I wouldn't. The Golem, I wouldn't either. I'm not sure if I spoke about the Gareth and the Jesse, uh, but I would not uh, level those up for Champion League. If you are going to level it up, don't spend too much resources on it because eventually you will have to transition to much stronger robots which i have mentioned uh, when i was going through the workshop list uh, the pattern is another one that i would not level up the same with the boa uh, let me see if i can go through here the natasha the natasha is actually an interesting one um, i think uh, if you are uh, or you don't have a fury you may want to consider actually a natasha because the natasha is one of the more stronger silver robots uh, in the game right now uh, works very well actually with something like Dragoons and uh, Spark or like uh, Flux and Geckos. Um, so I would keep an eye on the Natasha. Even something like uh, Avenger and Halo, um, which I've run on this bot before, works really well. Uh, the Leo, uh, same thing. You know, if you get it, don't level it up all the way because there's just better options out there. Um, but just be mindful of that, you know, as you get to the higher levels of uh, Champion League, uh, you will start to struggle with uh, that robot. And uh, let me just go through uh, some of these robots here. The same with the Griffin. I wouldn't level it up all the way. And I think that may cover it. Uh, I'm just going through the list here to see if I may have missed uh, anything. Um, the Carnage. Yeah, I think I covered all of that now. Okay, so lastly, we have the Raker, the Invader, and the Blitz, which are the newest additions to the game. Uh, out of those three, I think for me personally, I would only go for the Blitz. Uh, the thing with the Blitz, though, even now, I am finding it a bit on the weak side, so I wouldn't be surprised if all three of these get buffed in the near future. So I'd keep an eye out on those, and um, I think that pretty much sums up everything uh, within Workshop as well as the store as far as robots go. And I hope this was able to help you just like the other tutorial did with the weapons. If it did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed, consider subscribing. Until the next video, I'll catch you guys later.